Welcome everyone for this session on routing protocol. Uh, in this particular session, we will be uh, discussing the different protocols that the network layer has and uh, it uses the protocols for uh, fulfilling one of the very major responsibility that is routing, routing a packet from one device to the other device. So in theory lectures, we have already discussed about various ways of doing it. One protocol that is uh, that can that can be used for routing a static routing, in which we are able to uh, then uh, we are able to uh, write a static path manually. Then we have studied RIP routing information protocol. Then we have studied open shortest path first protocol, and then we have also studied extended interior gateway routing protocol. So the four different techniques that we uh, need to uh, discuss uh, and demonstrate it on a, a simulation tool called as packet tracer. So let us begin with the simulation wherein uh, we'll be considering a few requirements. So let me first uh, put down the requirements that are uh, we'll be considering for as uh, assuming for this. So network we we'll have net network A with address ten dot. 0 dot 0 dot 0 then we will have a network p 11 dot 0 dot 0 dot 0 then network c with network address 12 dot 0 dot 0 dot 0 then net d with address 10 13 0 0 0 and then net e with address 14 dot 0 dot 0 dot 0 and finally net f with address 15.0.0.0 these are the six different uh, ne uh, network addresses that or different networks that we will be using uh, for this particular demonstration so let us start with the demonstration now uh, wherein we will be requiring few uh, switches to uh, create or uh, connect the network so we will take any series let us stay, say I have taken 2960 series so uh, consider three switches because uh, we will be having three different networks with every switch let us connect the end device so this is the end device for this switch this is for this network and this device is for this network connect the switch using copper straight through cable with this device repeat the same process everywhere Now these switches are required to be connected to routers which and the router will uh, actually route the packet from this network to the other network. So let us say that uh, this is this is going to be my net A which is having address 10.0.0.0 slash 8 slash 8 means the subnet mask. This is my network B is having 11.0.0.0 and this is going to be uh, network C with 12.0.0.0 these are the three networks that I have considered for this demonstration the uh, device connected to this switch which belongs to network A will have IP address 10.0.0.10 this is just an assumption we can take any IP address within the range. Similarly, this device will have the address 11.0.0.10 and this device will have IP address 12.0.0.10. Now, next task is uh, we need to connect these three networks and for connecting the network we require router so let us take a router of any series once again so I have taken 2811 series of router so I will be requiring three routers each one for each network so let us place this properly so that we can have enough space So this router 1 is for network A, 
this is for network A, this is for network B and this is for network C. So these are the three different routers that we have taken. So if we need to, uh, first task is to uh, configure the network individually. So we will configure network A so that the packet can be routed easily from this uh, end device up to this router, from this end device up to this router and from this end device up to this router. So for doing it we need to connect the router with a switch. So once again select cable, cross straight through cable, select any port on this switch and out of the two available fast ethernet port we can select any port on this router. Same thing with this switch and this router and similarly on switch number 3 on router number 2. Now we need to write down which port we have taken. So this is fast ethernet 0 by 0. This is just for the reference so that uh, while configuration we will not face any uh, issues. This is fast 0 by 0 and this port number is once again 0 by 0. Now let us understand the concept of gateway. Gateway is uh, something which is like a door where, where, wherein if uh, assume a, s a simple example that in a family if there are a uh, few members so we don't have a separate door for each member we have only one door to get in and to get out. So if this is network A and there are around 100 machines or end devices connected to this network A then they should have only one gateway to go get out of this complete network A. So if network A wants to send something to network B then it should have only one path of going or uh, one uh, one gateway. So for this entire network A the fast ethernet 0 by 0 interface of this router will act as a gateway. So any packet that will be routed from this end devices to any outside world will go via this in interface only. So we need to configure this router for uh, IP address to uh, fast ethernet port 0 by 0. For doing it there are two options. First we can go on the CLI mode and on CLI mode we can give the IP address. So I uh, will just write the commands enable configure terminal interface fast ethernet 0 by 0 IP address 10.0.0.1 space subnet mask enter and no shutdown. So you can see that the link has gone up and and now the link is uh, uh, blinking a green signal so that that means that the link is up and it is uh, correctly configured for us. Now whatever address we have given to fast ethernet 0 by 0 should act as a gateway to this device. So in the gateway address we shall write 10.0.0.1. Similarly on this network B, uh, the, the other way of doing it is we can just simply uh, go on the configuration tab. In this configuration tab there are two interfaces available 0 by 0 and 0 by 1. We can select our choice and write the IP address 11.0.0.1 its subnet mask and switch it on. So it also does the same thing what the CLI mode does. Same thing should be done on this. Before doing it let, let us write the uh, gateway on this end device. So 11.0.0.1 is the IP address. On this device or uh, router once again go on fast internet 0 by 0 and write down the gateway address. Switch it on and provide the gateway to this end device. So in this case if I, if, if I want to add one more device to let's say network A, so I, I shall connect it to the switch first. So on any port number we shall connect it and then need to provide the IP address to this device. So because it is of network A, so 10.0.0.20 subnet mask and the gateway shall be remain same. So 10.0.0.1. So now any number of devices that I connect to network A will have the same gateway address which is of this interface.
Now for whatever configurations that we have done, we need to save the configuration. So uh, for saving it, we need to uh, type the command copy running configuration and startup configuration. So this is one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is, let us demonstrate it here. We can just go to the physical uh, configuration tab. In configuration tab, there is a setting given. And in this setting, we can save the NVRAM content. And just for saving it, we need to click the save button. So actually, it runs the same commands what we just saw on the console mode. So on this router, settings and save. So we have saved the configuration on all the three routers. Now let us understand the concept of serial ports because these three routers are not at connect directly connected to one another or are not very close to one another. These are the three different networks which are very uh, dif distance apart from one another. For connecting such things, we need, we need a serial port. But if we see that the routers, they do, don't have any serial ports right now. So what we need to do is we need to configure the router by adding some hardware to it. For adding the hardware, we need to go to the physical tab. In this physical tab, we, we, uh, we can just sh shut it down. And here the option is available HWIC2T, which clearly mentions that it is a serial high speed WAN interface card. We need to drag it to set this location and just power on the router. So at this point, we shall be able to see that the serial ports are available serial 000 and serial 001 so these are the three different ports available to us the same thing can be done on all the routers so go to physical tab switch it off hwic2t drag it and power on so now we have done the uh, physical configuration, hardware configurations. Now the next thing that we need to do is to connect these two routers. So for connecting the routers, we will select the serial DCE cable with clock rate. So connect this router 0 by 0 by 0 with 0 by 0 by 0 of this red network. Serial 0 by 0 by 1 with serial 0 by 0 by 0 of this network. And similarly, the remaining one. Just mention whatever port numbers we have used. So this is 000 and 000. So this is serial 0 by 0 by 0. This is serial 0 by 0 by 0. This is serial 0 by 0 by 1. And this is serial 0 by 0 by 0. This is serial 0, 0 by 0 by 1. And this is serial 0 by 0 by 1. So this is uh, what configurations we did, uh, how we have connected a device. Now the next point to understand here is, Next point to understand here is that because these two devices are a distance apart from one another, there should be some common part between them. There should be some intermediate network which should connect these two devices. For that reason, we, uh, we, we will we, we'll be requiring a public IP, public IP address or a public network to which, 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 which will execute on this port of the router. What all ex IP addresses that we have given on the uh, network part are the private addresses which belongs to the organization but to recognize the organization at a global level we require a live live IP address or a public IP address so let us consider that uh, network network D for this so the IP address is 13.0.0.0 this network let us say it is network E with address 14.0.0.0 and for this network it is network F with address 